This is such a musical episode. My name is Pam. Yeah. I like to paint. Yeah. You think you're better? Yeah. Oh no, you ain't. Hey everybody, I'm Chris and welcome to The Office Field Guide. I'm reviewing every episode of The Office and today we are looking at season nine's work bus. A work bus is how tomorrow gets things done. We take a break from the heavy jam drama with a fun one-off excursion. So let's go. Stop. Come back. Too late. Mm. I understand nothing. The Next Stop Pies episode drops me into my absolute worst nightmare of having to show a room full of my peers my work. What was that? That was just normal video with you making vulgar noises. Andy's confidence reminds me of the wise words shared in the series so long ago. Confidence. It's the food of the wise man, but the liquor of the fool. R.I.P. Ranjit, and I guess also R.I.P. this guy we've never heard of. I love the sudden shift in tone in Andy's video. I think it's a great touch. It does remind me of last year we were putting together a collage of different video messages, you know, for my actual job. And this one guy's snippet was just to talk about everybody's work anniversary, but he decided to do the top news story for each year that person started. Things got dark, like real fast. The victim was released from the hospital with second degree burns. But the idea of everybody playing softball and we never saw it, does give me vibes of the community fake clip episode. And I do like the expanded universe idea here too. So honestly, I really like this episode written by friend of the channel, Brent Forrester and directed by Breaking Bad's Brian Cranston, which is wild, just wild. Work bus, the episode is brimmed full of humor, heart, cringe, and a pinch of stupid that we've come to expect in season nine. And it all kicks off when Toby is testing for beehive in the wall. You think I have a machine for measuring beehives? Electromagnetic hotspots around the bullpen, marking high readings here and there. Dwight, as you recall, the owner of the building, downplays the danger and sticks to that pretty lock and key until Jim, looking to make some grand gesture to repay Pam for her being so chill about the whole I took a job two hours away without talking to you thing, plays a prank on Dwight to get him to shut down the office for a week so they can go on vacation. But while Jim is setting up that prank, we get set up for a story that I don't think we ever saw. You don't want to teach me PowerPoint, just say so. I don't want to teach you PowerPoint. Come on, just show me the PowerPoint. Just do the tutorial. You're the tutorial. No, dude, I'm not. As someone who's worked in corporate America for the last 20 years, I think it's pretty weird that Daryl is asking Clark to teach him PowerPoint, which is one of the most basic tools. And Clark's right, just go watch a tutorial. It may or may not be a callback to this moment, PowerPoint, 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 PowerPoint. Yes, there used to be a paperclip that would pop up and say, looks like you are writing a letter or resume. Would you like help? I believe his name was Clippy. But my hunch here is that there is a fuller cut of this episode that expands a Daryl and Clark plotline as we see them left behind when the bus takes off later. And that's the end of their story in the network cut. I don't really know. I didn't look it up, but perhaps they got up to some off camera hijinks. The day shift at a strip club. You can't unsee that. Backing that up a bit, Jim's prank works so well that Dwight not only decides to spend what has to be tens of thousands of his own dollars on building repairs in order to preserve his ability to not be shooting blanks. Bon appetit! <laughs> But, and much to Jim's dismay, Dwight also quickly secures a work bus solution for the Dunder Mifflinites. And his introduction to this work bus is fantastic. And I'll show as much as YouTube will allow here. Roll into the future with work bus. Say goodbye to wasteful buildings. These days, a mobile office isn't just for hotshot politicians. Now anyone can rent a- Is it weird that it's like all conservatives in that bus? Sometimes I do wonder what Dwight's politics really are. Seriously, you guys? Now you believe in Dwight's traditions when some Democrat looks it up on Wikipedia? The Scranton Zoning Board has a strong bias against beet farmers. The mayor is in the pocket of big lettuce. Probably more enjoyable not dissecting that. Leave it in the comments if you want uh, <laughs> who would be involved in Jan 6. Oh, I was in a mood when I wrote this. Okay, so what I really wanted to show is Dwight's trot to the bus after he explains all this, because for some reason, it is everything to me. 
It's one of these moments where Rain Wilson is just a peach, and I love him. And the staff quickly find out, though, all 13 of them being crammed into this 6 by 22 foot space is not really enjoyable for multiple reasons. Boy, I will hammer spank your rear. Except for the eight, no? Shh. And it's 20. Oh, And Jim makes an attempt at winning Dwight's humanity over here to do something special for Pam. And like, I think Jim's play here is kind of dumb because he did just cost Dwight, again, what has to be thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars for his prank. And they just gloss over that like it's no big deal. But Jim takes the matter to the boss, who is 100% indifferent to anything. Andy, don't you think we'd all be a lot more productive if we looked up and saw the best rural pie stand in Pennsylvania? Pies, pies, pies. pies. Hi. The fat people have spoken. And that fat people have spoken line may be the best Andy line of this entire season, maybe of season eight also. But things are not all rainbows and sunshine, as it turns out, because Nellie, following up a plot line from the Robert California era, is still trying to adopt a baby. A baby what? A human? Which, I'm not some traditionalist, but I do think that Nellie should maybe get settled a little bit more before attempting to adopt a kid. Maybe like hold a single job for a year, maybe get a driver's license, you know, just like basic things to take care of yourself and another person. So cute is her name. To her though, the only holdup is a letter of recommendation from her boss who happens to hate her guts. Thinks I'm a monster. Then should go back to Loch Ness. And the reward for its capture? All the riches in Scotland. And while The Office journeys to Laverne's Pies, we not only get this moment, which does make me wonder if The Office staff are living in a collective purgatory of some sort. Thanks. Playing a little hooky from work today. Oh my God. But also the drama ramps up with the Andy Nelly plotline and the Dwight by himself plotline. Nelly recruits Aaron's perspective, which probably is a wise move in my opinion, both to get perspective from Aaron's past, but also there's a strategy here of win Aaron, win Andy. That's a good approach. Andy does ultimately sign this letter of recommendation after several terrible things he says to Nellie. Those sand grains are tumbling with fury down it's not, the it's steep not sides if I'm of the hourglass. Writing. But he only signs that after Pete, who seems suspiciously aware of what's happening behind this curtain, tells Andy that that's Aaron back there crying, leaving Andy realizing that his behavior does have consequences. And once they're leaving their last stop for the afternoon, Kevin gives a warning about the timing. At 55 miles an hour, that just gives us five minutes to spare. 19,154 pies divided by 61 pies. 314 pies. Bonus points for whichever writer came up with having 314 as the amount of pies in that equation. But before they can leave, Dwight throws a fit and sits at the top of the bus like a petulant child until he and Jim have a heart to heart reminiscent of the stairwell scene from season four. The two discuss in a very Michael-esque way that even though Dwight doesn't have any kids, he should consider that the people who live in his building are like family. Building kinder. And that family wants pie. Next stop pies. Next stop pies. pies. What do we want? Pies. When do we want it? Pies. I did a whole month of waffle specials called Next Stop Pies, and it was different pie flavored waffles, pie inspired waffles each week on the food truck. It was delicious. But at the pie shop, there is so much going on between Kevin wanting to get pied, Aaron and Pete off conversating in a beautiful sunset together, and a very sweet moment between Jim and Pam. We did it. You did it. Work Bus's vibe seemed to be a return to, let's say, the season six-ish style of humor and filler storytelling. And it works as a break from the drama, letting audiences, along with Jim and Pam, to catch their breath. So with that, let's dive into the deeper meaning. What does a bean mean? Someone please explain it to Kevin. People are stepping on all sorts of drama landmines in this episode. Three stories in Work Bus are all wrapped into this episode, and they all revolve in some way, shape, or form around the concept of family, but also sprinkle in dealing with our past. For example, Nellie wanting to start a family via adoption, but now she's dealing with the fact that her single largest barrier to that goal 
is someone she wronged pretty fiercely in the past. And it's easy to read Andy's behavior as villainous here, and good, because I think he's being a douchebag. But if Nellie is a normal person, then she should also be considering that had maybe she handled things differently in the past, this would not have been an issue. In the process, Nellie forms a relationship with Aaron, whose concept of family is unfortunately pretty skewed by her past, which just listening to her recount the feelings of inadequacy that she has from never being able to close the deal is just very heavy. Thus, watching Andy take away the ability of someone that at least Aaron assumes would be a good parent, jury's still out on that, ends up being more than Aaron can bear. And you can just hear Nellie comforting Aaron in quite the motherly way. Oh no, no, look, it's, it's all right, really. It isn't your fault. No, no, look, it's, you were so kind. And it isn't anything to do with you. And that's kind of touching. I don't like this plotline, but it's kind of touching. Dwight, on the other hand, is still dealing with his disappointment that Philip isn't his kid, and now is placing all that blame on himself, even though this humorous conversation about Jim's greatest prank exists. But that disappointment drives Dwight into believing some wild things. You mean you flooded my building with dangerous electromagnetic radiation as a prank? No. That's genius. That's the best prank you've ever done. I'll take it. <laughs> and spending tens of thousands of dollars in the process. Jim mentions his family when he brings up taking the week off. I'm gonna drive you up to the lake, give you a whole week on the water, just you, me, and the kids. And the entire episode's purpose is to make some big grand gesture to represent his love for his wife, seemingly out of gratitude, but you also have to wonder if there's a little bit of guilt mixed up in there, like he's doing this as penance for his gaff. Laverne's pie tires fixed also. We will be doing that and we'll be getting a dozen. You really think you can make it up to me with food? And it, honestly, it works. Pam eats it up just like that pie and the head lean thing. I love it. Honestly, this is the vibe of season nine. This is what it should have been. And <sighs> let's rate this thing. This is the worst. <laughs> Look, Andy, even if your ancestors did on slaves, it wouldn't be your fault. I'm not rating this high because Brian Cranston directed it and a friend of the channel, Brent Forrester, wrote it. I think my feelings have come through in this video pretty clearly. I don't know if it's because I feel like we're in a drama desert or what, but Work Bus is always welcomed on rewatches in my mind. The cold opening, though, it's fine. I cringe, which is, I think, what you're supposed to do in this cold opening. But as someone who's made terrible videos and had to show those people live to friends and coworkers in the past, I have secondhand embarrassment that makes my stomach upset in this. So look, my actual friends don't even know I have a YouTube channel. You're like in on the secret, everybody. All up, I, I give this one a two out of five. That didn't work. That was not the right. It's it's fine. It's not great. Next time, do more failure stuff. As for this episode, it feels like a nice break, and I don't know if that's intentional or not. The drama bus line we've been on has been cruising through the beginning of season nine, and its destination seems to be driving to some dark places. And then we come to work bus, which turns that idea on its head. Perhaps it's foreshadowing, or perhaps it's just poor storyboarding and arc planning, Perhaps. Or perhaps it's just a real look at what I, and I'm sure some of you have experienced before, is sometimes you just don't know where things are gonna end up. There is a certain cringe and drama building up through this because you don't know if they're gonna get to the pies, but then they do. And that's great, I love that. <laughs> I love that journey for them. So I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and say that this was the intentional roadside rest stop that this season needed. And to be honest, I find a lot of peace and enjoyment in the chaos of work buzz in a way that makes me feel good. And any episode of The Office that does that warrants for sure higher than a three out of five. But does work buzz earn a five out of five? Is it a perfect episode of The Office? And I feel like I can just say, no, it's not. But 
I also searched high and low for criticism that I can hoist upon this one. Andy is normal is the worst part of this episode. That storyline between him and Nelly, it's for the birds. But also, I try not to judge episodes by telling stories that I wouldn't tell because it's not my story to tell. And this was their story to tell and it was, it was fine. I actually enjoy how that storyline ends. So I guess I'm giving this a five out of five? <laughs> Question mark? That was not a fail. Five out of five seems extremely high, but ranking this season is going to be weird. We'll get there at some point. Thanks to all the patrons. Join up. I'm trying to get to a certain number of patrons to decide if I should restart the office or not. But you know, you could join if you love what we're doing here anyway. Join me next time when we look at Here Comes Treble. I decided acapella music is awesome. Which I do recall having a lot of feelings about. Season nine, baby. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. What was that? That was just normal video with you making vulgar noises.